Hello, dear friends, and welcome to the GeoCoast. Um, today I'm meeting with the director of the Geological Survey of Ireland, Kim Bruggen. Hello, Kim. Max, great to see you. So, we're meeting at the Infomaya seminar here in Dingle, on the west coast of Ireland. And, uh, like, even driving from Cork, I know yeah. that, like, there's a huge change in the geology and morphology of Ireland's coastline. So, as the director of the Geological Survey, What's your take on the diversity of uh, geological diversity of Ireland's coast? Well, it's interesting you ask about the diversity because one of the one of the kind of almost marketing reasons uh, we talk about in in terms of Irish geology is that that within a relatively small country, a relatively small space, we have a huge variation in the geology, a huge diversity mm. in the geology, and we've actually used it in the past to develop uh, projects, interreg funded projects on developing Ireland as a location for college tours and uh, college field trips. Mm -hmm. So within Ireland, we've probably got greater diversity of geology than you would have over kind of a much wider geographic area, somewhere, somewhere say, within the US continent or in Europe. And from the kind of work you're doing, Max, in GeoCoast, the coastline is where you're going to see that, where it's going to be exposed. And the other thing we have in Ireland is we've got lots of soil, lots of peat, so outcrop is at a premium. We've lots of agriculture and farmers like to get rid of the outcrops in order to improve their farming. So the coastline is where we get this opportunity to see that change in geology, to see that, uh, to see that, to see that diversity. It's a, a kind of a, be a side benefit of the Infomar project where we're mapping the seabed, that we're also going to be mapping the coastline, we're looking at the coastline. And increasingly, we're, tr we're starting to try and capture that information, try and photograph that information. You're looking at the work that, that you've been doing, trying to get, if you like, academics uh, and uh, geological experts to visit their favorite bit of coastline. It's a great idea to be able to have that, have that online have it as a YouTube video that people can, can see. And the same idea with the, with the atlas, that we cover the variety of geologies in there, the variety around the coastline. And this whole area of the onshore, offshore, uh, the white ribbon area, as we call it, the difficult bit to map for Infomar, is really where a lot of that, the action is. It's, it's where people live, let's be honest. If it's where you know, people want to build their houses. It's where, you, where your industrial development is uh, and all your leisure and tourist development. So the whole coastline is also the front line for climate change and sea level rise. We have an interreg project called Cherish we're involved in. Very interesting, looking at how can we measure, how can we map this area, the changes that are occurring in these areas, and look uh, at climate change. There's an intergovernmental group looking at measuring sea level rise in Ireland, rather, so that they can apply these models accurately. So it's an area of huge interest to us, an area that needs an awful lot of work. And um, if you were just to give a general overview, what type of rocks can you find on the island's coastline? Well, everything really. I mean, that's it. You've got a range of rocks going from the Precambrian up to the present day. So you've almost almost everything you need to see within the Republic. We're kind of short on on the Mesozoic. The, we don't have the dinosaurs, you know. Mm -hmm. But but you've such a huge range. You take the whole island, you've, and you've and you've got these iconic locations as well, like the cliffs in Donegal, uh, the, the the cliffs of Moher that people know about here in Dingle. You know, uh, and and you look at uh, places like Kinsale; they're defined by their geology. So you have huge variation of anything you want to see. And and for for geological field trips, uh, there's areas like Loch Shinny, north of Dublin, where you've got these Chevron Falls that show you the closing of the uh, uh, you know the Alpine orogeny, uh, closing of, of continents. Uh, the same you can see you can see that here on the south coast where you've got this east-west folding so well exposed kind of stuff you've worked on with us as well on mapping within within Cork Harbour controls the shape of Cork Harbour so it's a huge huge variety and it's so well exposed and even if it's only to give people a slight appreciation of of how their coastline developed why it developed the, the geology is the kind of backbone to that here in Dingle a new geology guide that was published in 2018 where the two academics Brian Williams and Ken Higgs who had done a lot of their research here had had a lot of PhDs work, working here pulled that together into a field guide a really comprehensive field guide beautifully illustrated and we produced in Geology Survey Ireland a new 1 to 50,000 map to go with it showing you the locations the geology what it actually means so you had these massive massive lakes these huge river systems these very early fish evolving that are actually you know fossils being found out on the blaskets um, you know uh, explaining the explaining the, the rugged peninsula that's here because of the really dramatic geology and then the dramatic folding that's mm -hmm. occurred so that's where the story is 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 played out and you know the more we can do about highlighting it 
and, and not just from a geological point of view, like I say, it's, where, it's, where it's important from an industry point of view, from a preservation point of view. The big issue is, is the, geo, the geotechnical side of it. How strong is the coastline? I, I do a field trip quite often, it's a classic sort of college field trip, on Bray Head, just uh, for in, in North Wicklow for students. And I do it for Heritage Week and it shows that there's, you know, the areas where there's these quartzites, these big clean mm -hmm. quartz sands, which are deep water sands, form these big ridges and they, they put tunnels through it for the train. Mm -hmm. These areas that were the shaley, shalier components, these grey wackies, they break up uh, a lot easier and they were slump deposits in the deep seabed. We know that now interpreting, but they form really rubbly parts that cause landslides and they, mm -hmm. that the Irish Rail have to repair every year and have to spend a lot of money reinforcing. So the geology is dictating the behaviour and it's really important from an engineering point of view as well. You know. And Kun, I know that throughout your career you worked both onshore and offshore <laughs> and before becoming the uh, director of yeah. the geological survey yeah. you've been in charge of the Informa program on yeah. the side of the geological survey yeah. and like with this new mapping that Informa produces um, do you see any linkages between like coastal geology and near shore geology? I guess there's a link with ancient shorelines when the sea level was yeah. lower. So what you map out at sea, it used to be land before. Yeah, yeah it's, it's one of the most interesting parts of the job. We often call it that this, the, you know, the, the tech people say, uh, you know, uh, innovation occurs at the edges. And, and for us, it, we see that where it's often when we're interacting with the archaeologists in mm. projects like Cherish, uh, the geographers uh, around, say, the coastline of the Quaternary, uh, the engineers, that, that that's where we often get this, the, the, the new thinking and we get the greatest value out of our data. If we're, not, if we're just talking to ourselves, we're not going to achieve a whole lot. You know, we can study the geology to the nth degree. So it's that kind, those kind of collaborations, working with the, the, the paleontologists, the fossil people and the biologists in the National Museum. So all of those kind of collaborations and, and taking the geology and, 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 and seeing where it fits in, that it's a small part of a bigger story or underpinning another story is really for me one of the most rewarding parts of the job and also one of the most important because we have to be, you know, why do we have a geological survey? Why have we got people working away trying to understand it? So it's about understanding our groundwater and really clean clean water for people or having a water supply during a drought and the same with Infomar. It's, you know, Know, it's one thing being out on the boats, but why are we doing it? And here we're in Dingle, if you're in from our seminar, we're seeing how people are taking our data and using it to develop tourism products, diving products, and seeing how it fits in with the, with the bigger picture. So exactly that's it. It's about those, those connections and those wider connections is where we get the real value.